Good evening, Free Enterprise fans, and welcome. We are now finally here at the Lunar Table stage of the Highway to the Three Miss Zone Tournament. We have a super hype match tonight. Invenerable versus PK4787. My name is Vitasia, and I'm joined tonight by Courant. How are we doing tonight, man? I am doing very well, thank you. The FFR community sends their love, and what a match to be calming tonight. My goodness. I caught some wind about all the hype about this match over the last couple of days. Uh, it is an honor to be a part of it. I'm really excited to see what both of these runners have in store for us tonight. Absolutely. This is, you know, one of the most anticipated matches, I think, in the entire opening round. Both uh, PK and Invenerable, very, you know, long established runners. Invenerable, of course, winner of the last uh, of the Fabul Gauntlet. Uh, Inven and PK actually faced off really early in that Fabul Gauntlet match. And PK gave Inven a run for his money in the, that tournament. Uh, a much harder out than Inved really faced for the rest of that tournament for a long time. Uh, so this has really been one of the most anticipated matchups of this early table round. And everyone's so hyped. Are you hyped, Karan? Absolutely. I mean, looking at the record between these guys, and now we get a chance to take a gander at their objectives. This looks like it is going to be quite the world touring seed because it seems we have objectives on every corner of, well, every landmass that we can think of tonight. Yeah, that's right. Conquered the vanilla Masamune altar, so one of the most difficult spots. We might have some interesting matchups up there, depending on what boss we end up rolling. Break the Dark Elf spell with the Twin Harp, so of course. That's everyone's favorite meme here in the game where we can get some randomized music. We really look forward to that. And then defeat the king at the town of Monster Spot. That That's interesting in and of itself because that can be kind of a hit or miss. That is a very speedy spot. So you either have to overlevel it or really pay attention to your party makeup and your strats as you're going through there. And then, of course, the, the twofer... Legend Sword with Adamant to forge the Excalibur. Um, and, you know, that's how this tournament has been going on. Uh, this should be a really exciting matchup. Nothing is free for these guys. Uh, they're going to give us a great match. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun, and it looks like a lot of people are really, really hyped about it, really looking forward to it, and we are underway. Now, one of the changes in the table stages is that the characters, as soon as they join your party, are perma-joined. So you have to make some instant reactions here. We have an opening ready and a magma key. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, looks like both of them left Rydia behind for now. Uh, it is worth noting in the seeds that you can go back and get characters that you drop, uh, unless you don't have room for them. But both runners, I see, thinking the same thing, that they're going to tour the world and the underground, most likely, just to see what they have before they make any commitments. And that's a pretty, you know, unless it's someone that's just phenomenal, like a Rosa, you know, or Tella, you know, that's a pretty common opening play. Be like, yeah, no thanks. I'll, I'll pass for now. We'll see what our party comp is going to be. Both runners immediately going up north. Looks like we're going to get checks in the Waterfall Cave. Yeah, we'll see the character that we have here at the Watery Pass and see how the characters react. Oh, well, I see another shock of green hair. Hey, so we're going to go ahead and grab it. And I imagine we'll say, nah, go take, go sit with your twin. Yeah, well, I was going to say... Okay! Yeah, I was going to say, we've got a divergence already. Inven sends her to the tower, and PK says, you know, go ahead and hit your ride on my airship. You know, Rydia is kind of an interesting decision. We do, you know, she does have access to early warp, and, you know, sometimes you can get lucky. If you go to the Mount Hob spot, she will learn a random summon, 
if you go there. Another divergence already. PK saying, all right, we're good. Let's go ahead and do magma right now. Uh, Inven is doing the rest of his overworld checks. He's over here in Damsian, clearing out the Damsian basement. Uh, Got to imagine, you know, this is a scenario where it's feasible. You could skip the hovercraft almost entirely because we know we don't need the hook to get there. Uh, so I got to wonder, I mean, he's banking on something being here or just knows that he's going to invest the time here eventually. Right. Yeah, it's it'll be interesting to see exactly how PK pursues the, if he goes ahead and goes for all the underground checks that he can access immediately. I'd imagine if he's going ahead and opening it, he will go ahead and do that or not. Uh, he's going over to Mesidia probably to grab those characters. We did get an Edward in <laughs> damn scene, so go figure on that one. Yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> as, many, as many memes as there are about Edward Strad, so you're like, nah. PK finds another young and a cane, actually. That is intriguing because Kane obviously has the power to get you through a fair bit of the uh, of those checks in the overworld, and it looked like well, it looked like PK actually left behind that initial Ridia because I didn't see her in the party when the characters came up. So maybe no. that menuing was just so quick that we didn't notice it. Oh, and Inven finds the glorious treasure that is Tella up on Mount Hobbs. Just the value that Tella presents is so large for this particular flag set, if only because you'll have early access to uh, that weak spell once you clear Mount Ordeals. And that unlocks a host of different things that you can do in terms of your grind. The table flag set can be a little bit rude because guess what? There's no sirens anywhere. If you're good at grind, you have to be smart about the grind. And there's another Tella. An easier Tella, no less. Don't even have to fight for it. Yeah, I will say that's one of the things that I, I'm a pretty newer runner myself. I became a part of this community essentially at the beginning of the tournament. And that's one thing that I've really, it's taken me a good bit to understand just how valuable Tella is to that grind. But I've started to understand it myself, of course, only after getting my butt kicked out of the tournament. But still, it's definitely, it takes a little bit to learn, but once you do get that down pat, oh my goodness, it does open up so many possibilities. As soon as you unlock weak. Now, you do have to clear out Mount Ordeal, so it's not like completely free. You can't take a party of five Edwards and then call it good, you know? Right. So, I mean, it takes a little bit of effort, but, the, you know, PK is setting up very well. Worth noting, though, as of right now, we have no real white mages available to us. No Purims, no Rosas. Um, and we've not seen any clue about any of them. We've not really checked the Kaipo bed to see if it's there. Um, a lot of the other checks that we haven't done, you know, are all locked at this point in time. We've gotten all of our free checks out of the way. So that will be interesting and really does dictate a lot of the party comp. Um, it, we, it might come down to our healer being grab Iridia, get the Asura spell, and pray. Now, that's not best strats by any means, but uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. Yeah, I was going to say, White Mage Iridia isn't exactly an ideal situation, but I have seen it work, and I have seen it work against Z fights, so it's certainly doable if push comes to shove, but you, of course, have to get that Asura in order to make it work in chat did pk fade antlion yes although that's not an unreasonable play because we, we had an opening magma key so right um, doing all of your checks at this point in time trying to figure out you know for example there's some good loot that's available here in the fey march as you're going through it's a relatively high spot curse string available in that armor shop that's worth noting as well I was about to say I wonder and it looks like pk is turning back around and is going well he was about to try to raise the capital to just go ahead and buy it, but then pulled back from it last second. He's going to go ahead and check and see who the royalty are this evening. Yeah, this is important information. This king is going to be one of our checks, and it is, oh, Lunar Spark. Uh oh So, hey, it's worth checking because yeah. 
<laughs> and yeah, we're, we're not doing that. We're we're not doing that, folks. No, no. Wyvern anywhere is bad. Wyvern there is a whole heck of a lot worse. Honestly, that, I mean, and uh, Barabas the Brown in chat actually makes a good point. That's probably the best outcome because now you know, and you know that you're probably going to be fading that. And just unless you're over leveling and getting to the point where you have a super fast edge at some point to be able to get off some reflex, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, now, that's true. Not that one is a loss. Like, okay, now we know we're going to be forging and we're going to have to do the vanilla Mouse Moon Altar and we're going to be getting Twin Heart. Right, yeah. That's And that's one thing also I think that's really important in regards to how these runners are doing things is just the value of having that knowledge. You go through and you're able to shape your plans and you know exactly what you're going to be doing and getting into because you've been able to go and make those checks early. No, you're absolutely right. So we have PK going ahead and double checking, you know, going to activate the Yang. So once we do head over there to Fabul, it'll be a double check there. Um, and Venerable is now going through the Antline Cave. There's been some interesting stuff here in the Antline Cave. You know, he's got an Ogre Axe, which isn't fantastic, but it's better than the Vanilla Spear for Kane. Um, he's still got his Yang, who... At level 10, you know, doesn't deal a whole lot of damage, but, you know, Yang doesn't need a whole lot of equipment. He just needs levels to get activated. So really interesting to see these two runners and where they're at. And Invenerable finds the, the ultimate. Gauntlet. Oh, boy, that's uh, that, that's going to be a bit of a slow meatball to to roast here at Antlion. Uh, it's still obviously a good thing to see what item is there, but unfortunately it's going to lose Invenerable a little bit of time trying to get all that taken care of. It's true. It's true. PK, meanwhile, fading Antlion K for now. Um, that It's kind of a meme for PK fans out there. Fade Antlion, PK. Yep, that, that tracks. PK finds himself with Odin with a bunch of level 10 characters. I don't know if he's got this. Well, we shall see. I don't re I don't remember seeing... I think I do remember seeing a Lit Bolt, but I believe it was Invenerable who picked that up, not PK. So, it's too bad that Lit Bolt actually could have come in handy in this fight, but he hadn't visited Domsian yet, so uh, no getting it from their treasury. But, oh, he pulls it off. Oh, that's impressive. Uh, meanwhile, we see Invenerable... Using that Blizzard Spear. This is a niche strat right here. Using that Blizzard Spear to be able to cast, you know, a, a weakened ice too. But at this point, it doesn't matter at these levels. Yeah, I mean, these monsters are, they're low enough in terms of HP that, yeah, that's a really smart move. That's certainly something I wouldn't have thought of because it gets you that utility and you don't have to spend a whole lot of items or time to do it. So he does find the spoon. Does that make Edward tempting? Well, considering that the spoon flag has been turned off on the table settings, oh, unfortunately not. not. Oh, oh God. God. Wow. Oh. oh, dear. Well, Sheila one has value tonight, everybody. Just in case you were wondering. All right, and there's some life potions. Um, so this becomes interesting now. PK uh, fading some of the early checks. You know, he hasn't done any of Damsian. He hasn't done Antlion. He's just kind of focused on what he needs to progress and unlock more of the world. The early magma key. Going ahead and doing Sheila one, which is a free check. And he goes, uh, let's let's finish shopping first and then make a decision. Keep in mind, before his Tela gets turned online, he's got to complete Mount Ordeals. That's where he got his Tela, so he went up, got him, and then backed out. Inven took the longer route to get Tela, fighting him up on Mount Hobbs. He'll see that second Tela eventually on Mount Ordeals and probably kick himself. Just, just a little. 
And these are the kinds of races that, as a runner, I dread because everything is open to us right now. Mm -hmm. there, there, there are so many rabbit holes and distractions and different ways that you can go that end up being just a complete waste of time. And this is a one-on-one -on -one match, so you don't, you can't even begin to guess what your opponent is going to do. Uh, it's just crazy. I see Invenerable taking an interesting step. He is stopping by the naming way in Tamra and changing some names around. I, I think this was the first time I've ever seen this during a race. So he, he must feel pretty comfortable about something if he's sitting there changing names in the middle of a race. I think I know what he was doing, but we won't get onto that. Meanwhile, ah. he finds another Rydia and our Mist Dragon in the Baron Inn. Uh, probably not terribly interested in Rydia, but we're definitely interested in that Mist Dragon. Yeah, absolutely. Since uh, once you take that dragon down, you can go check with uh, Rydia's unfortunately perishing mother, and you can get a freaky item check. So that is a big thing to see, and silk webs are also a big thing to see in the item shop. Folks in chat, it there it's not an RNG manipulation at all. Just I'm just letting you know that. Just... He is checking some shops. Meanwhile, PK is climbing ordeals now. I mean, at this point, you unlock your Tella, you get your party, and you grind. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The only thing the only thing that would give me pause if I were in this situation right now is as and you mentioned earlier, we have no white mages at all. We've not seen we've not seen Rosa, we've not seen Porum anywhere. And I I would hesitate before doing a grind in that situation, but these guys are way more talented at this game than I, so they may very well feel comfortable with what they have or might pick up a character that they've left behind just for the purpose of that grind. Meanwhile, we do have a vanilla Mylan fight up here in the first Mount Ordeals. PK doing a very similar strat, um, using his cane to cast the blizzard. Um, Yang is actually really pretty good at this fight because undead are weak against fire anyway, and he comes equipped with the fire claw. So, nice. Yeah, I was going to say chat's already kind of beaten me to the point, but I was about to call out Dathus myself since he's the, the master of the vanilla seeds. Now, this was not a da Dathus special. Um, this was this was rolled by our wonderful restreamer, Neil Bari, I believe. So perhaps we have a new claimant to the vanilla throne. Vanilla race, go. <laughs> well, Vanilla I'll... race within the randomizer, go. Well, I can go ahead and tell you I'd be in last place, or pretty close. All right, so here comes Inven. He's doing his checks in the underground, sees the sparkle, and then correctly, this is all about a knowledge check, and he knows it. Right. So he's checking and goes, nope, 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 nope. I don't blame him one bit. There is a strategy, if you can set it up properly with Star Veils, um, where if you can get a Star Veil off on Plague before he actually gets a cast of his count off or get him to reflect a count, uh, he will eventually die to his own count. So that's kind of the only low-level strat I'm aware of for any of the Lunar Sparkles. So, yeah. Yeah, I have seen that one in play a couple of times. I've actually accidentally pulled it off myself, and I say very accidentally because I'm still not sure how I managed it. But yeah, you don't want to risk anything like that against the king of the Mega Nukes, who, of course, is sitting in the king's throne, so it's rather natural, given. Mm-hmm. 
All right. So PK does get through his Mylan Z or his Mylan fight. So he's now going to be doing the next check. My uh, ant lion up here in Mylan Z. Ooh, that's that's a little spicy too, uh, especially for Portel. Even in the back row, is getting hit pretty hard. Uh, hopefully, uh, well, looks, uh, of course, some of these abilities will get around Ant Lion's tendency to counter the living blazes out of everything. This is actually kind of the ideal party for that because you know he's only going to swing normally right now. Between Yang's, you know, power where he charges up. It's not a, I mean, it's a physical attack, but it's not a fight, which will initiate the counter. And then Kane can jump. Uh, you're not going to be seeing any counters here, really. Yeah. I was going to say, I guess the biggest issue would be for Tella in that back row. But then again, levels don't particularly matter for Tella either. So if he's on the carpet after this one, it's not too much of a loss. All right, Inven is getting ready to start his Fabul Gauntlet in a little bit better position in terms of equipment than PK was when he did it. That said, uh, you know, PK, if you're looking at this race from kind of a, a straight line run, Inven's done more and he's got more stuff to sell. But, I mean, from a straight line race, PK's absolutely ahead of him. So we'll see if what Inven did earlier will lead to him being able to catch up quicker. Yeah, that's, and especially once we see those D machine grinds begin, uh, which I expect is where both runners are eventually going to end up, then yeah, I mean, we'll see if the early preparation on Inven's part pays off, or if PK's, like you said, the straight line strategy ends up paying those dividends. Um, Odin went down pretty quickly on Inven's side, so like you said, those that ex uh, that experience, those items and such, seem to have paid off at least a little bit on that vein. Alright, meanwhile, PK is going to show us what the item up here on Mount Ordeals is before we make any other rash decisions. And it is... Oh. Oh. Oh boy. Well, we have half of an objective. And, oh, this is the worst place for Water Hag. Oh, man, yeah. Free boss at a free fight spot. Feels bad, man. Yeah, it's, it's like you said, if you're a runner, if you're racing this, you're sitting here going, dang it, why couldn't I have found this, say, at king, at the King of Monsters or any other of your battle objective spots. So, unfortunately, those three hits are going to come in, and that's it for Water Hag. So, PK is now, I mean, he has a fully powered up Tela. Do you, if you're PK, because you know who is in the Baron Inn, you don't know what key items, and you'll get two key items from the Baron Inn between the Mist Dragon, and then just the vanilla key item that you end up getting there. Plus, there's a character up on the moon that we can check that we don't know that could just be the trigger for, yep, I'm good. I'm done grinding. Like, if that's a Rosa up on the moon, cool, cool, whatever. Like, I'll go pick up my other young and we'll call it good. What do you do if you are these two runners right now with the knowledge that we have? That's an awfully good question. And I mean, I mentioned a little bit earlier that the only thing that would really be holding me back from going at the grind at this point would be that white mage. So I, I feel like I would be looking for, if I could possibly find a white mage character, perhaps up on the moon and then find the ethers to obviously get the grind going, then I think I would be content and I would go ahead and sally off to the giant. Uh, I I don't know, though. It would be interesting to see what, what they do as far as how they go about applying this now. Chat makes a good point. Uh, really, to get things going for, 
for the grind that we're talking about, we need some ethers. Yeah. There's no ethers that we found up to this point in time. Yeah, I, I certainly haven't seen any uh, as far as trying to keep between the two streams. So, yeah, that feels like that would be the biggest hindrance at this point. Because obviously, no D-Machine grind is going to go much of anywhere if you only have three casts a week. DK doing his due diligence, and I think this is smart, especially in these flag sets, saying, okay, just check the character spots, because you don't want to give up a free Rosa or anything. Sees the Tella and resets out almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah, especially when you know you've got character checks, and you know that your next reasonable step after being content with your party is going to be to go ahead and go into the Giant and get those levels you want to make sure that you've gotten through every possible character check spot that you could get before you go in, because you don't want to be going back later with levels on sort of suboptimal characters or a suboptimal number of characters, and then find out to your detriment that you've missed being able to level a Rosa or a Porum or somebody who will absolutely be a bedrock of your final team. And PK looks like he's pulling the trigger. It is moon time. Uh, Jason Nellis stepped away for a minute. Where was the Legend Sword? The Legend is up on Mount Ordeals. It's Vanilla Legend Sword. All right, so Neobari, Neobari mentioning in chat that unfortunately Invenerable is having a few technical issues. Uh, apologies for that, and also thank you to Neobari for doing such a good job on the restream. It definitely helps when we've got somebody who is on top of all the technical stuff uh, far better than I could even begin to hope. So I definitely appreciate it, and I know everybody else does too. And of course, while we're giving kudos, I do want to also give a shout out to Bad Karma behind the scenes, doing the tracking for us tonight, making the buttons light up, um, really keeping track of things and allowing us to focus on commentating on the race and not having to track everything. So uh, Bad Karma and Neobari behind the scenes. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, absolutely. I think on PK side, I think this is going to be the first time we've seen Dwarf Castle, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to go too deep into it, but we're at least going to give get a check. Uh, vampires are here, which uh, makes some low-level strats kind of interesting. But it looks like he is going to at least check some some pots up here, see what's going on. Oh, and then he says, nah, I'm good. Hmm. He went ahead and bought the cell spell, so I'm thinking he's going to go back and pick up one of those Rydias pretty soon. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, that's, that's a gigantic... You know those guys in the middle of the snowstorms who wave the big glowy sticks to, to help bring planes down? Make yeah. sure they know where they're going? Yeah, that's what that was. Uh, yeah. We're getting some Rydia. Well, looks like we're getting Rydia after a check of the moon character at the very least. I love this check. I love this check. I love this check. We're going to be checking this. We're probably also going to check the moon shops because I still haven't seen any ethers. Right. Of course, then the question is, I, well, I guess I'll wait for about 30 seconds to ask the question because we might get it answered momentarily. Oh, well, there's ether twos at least. And there's Osra as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, getting a couple ether twos, fantastic. Um, man, Asura, if we, uh, 
you don't want Rydia to be your healer. Yeah. You don't. But this is the table flags. Beggars can't be choosers. I think it really depends on who he's who he finds when he walks in for the moon check. And, well, obviously, but we'll see who it is. I like his. He's going. Please, Rosa. 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 Nope. Not this time. Well, now we have to give serious thought to Rydia being the the seeds healer. Oof. Man, that feels horrible. <laughs> so how many tellas is that? I think that's three, four? Three tellas. So we three have tellas. one on Hobbs, one on Mount Ordeals, and now one on the moon. Now, we've also had a few Rydias as well. We've had a Rydia in Waterfall Cave. We had a, our starting Rydia. And there's a Rydia that's sitting in Barren Inn as well. Uh, Alec Pendragon asks, does anyone check Kaipobet? No, we have not seen Kaipobet check. And... He came committing to full Rydia, yeah. This will be extra interesting. I mean, he, of course, he does know where Os where Ostra is now. So you can get that. I, I almost imagine he's going to have his Rydia's, you know, one of them using Asura and then the other one bouncing spells off at the end. Or, you know, maybe able to pivot to both of them healing if necessary. That's just kind of how it feels, I think. <coughs> oh, my apologies for that, everyone. I'm sorry. Yeah. Good um, night. Meanwhile, Inven is going into the Baron Inn and saying, okay, let's, let's do this. Because it's a double check here. And we get ourselves a pain man on the other side of it. This is a survivable pain man. You get one heal off on Yang, and you're good. Yeah. And he did get that in, so he should be good to go with the fight. Meanwhile, we see PK over here. He's turned on encounters, and he's doing his step counting now over here outside Baron. He's committed. He's doing it. He he is setting up the RNG manipulation in order to, to do his D-Machine grind right now. No hex given. There is a sand ruby. We might get our bed check here directly. I was about to ask if either of the runners had checked the character in Typo yet, and I don't believe either of them have. I It did look like Inven went ahead and took that Rydia. I believe so, but then again, the speed of menuing has deceived me before in this seed, so I'm not counting on my observations at, at the slightest at the moment. Okay, so PK reset out because he didn't quite like his step count at that point in time. I mean, it does take a little bit to set up, but you would much rather set it up outside of Baron than, uh, you know, in the middle of the giant of Babel when you yeah. can't walk away from anything. Rat tail from Rydia's mother. Well, that gets you a key item, but we don't have a hook to turn it in with yet, so that only has limited value at the moment. Worth noting right now that Inven has three key items more than PK. He did Antlion Cave, and then he did Barret Inn, which was good for a twofer. Yeah, so I, I wonder if he's trying to get up to... I don't know if he's trying to get up to the 10 key items to double that grind, but he's kind of somewhat steering in that direction, it seems. Perhaps. I don't know. It's hard to say. Mm 
All right, so PK rests and gotta think he's ready to go. Meanwhile, Inven going to be turning in his Darkness Crystal now. I, you know what? I gotta say, I am at least somewhat tempted to try to figure out a way how to do Dwarf Castle first for that character check. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I guess with the party that these guys have, they could conceivably pull it off. I, at least just from my own perspective, I wouldn't be comfortable doing it right yet because they haven't had a... Well, they've had some levels, but not as many as I'd feel as I'd want to do a Dwarf Castle check at this point. Unfortunately for them, the warp glitch is off, so they won't be able to get a twofer at Dwarf Castle. But it would... You know, if they felt comfortable with the levels, they could go ahead and get that character check. Uh, but it looks like Inven may be going back to revisit the Rydia's that he left behind. Yep, double Rydia. Both of them committing to no white mages. And this is part of the spiciness of the table flags. Once you have your party, it's set. We're done. Yeah, I think both of them are probably thinking that the other one is doing this and they want to make sure that they are getting this off the ground as soon as possible. So identical parties, realistically. Double Riddy is Tella, a Yang, and a Kane. Well, I guess may the best execution win at this point. Now, here's the interesting thing. When PK grabbed his Ridias, they gained a couple levels while they were, he was messing around out here. And his Ridias were level five while his highest level person was level 17. So they're not outside the 15, like they're still within the 15 level zone. I don't think PK's Ridias are going to be slingshotted but because of everything extra that Inven did, I think his Ridias will be slingshotted. That, well, that could very well make a difference. It could, especially if you're Inven, you could conceivably not have to do quite as many D-Machines if, if there is slingshotting in the works there. Okay, chat saying slingshot is only five level different. Okay, I th for some odd reason, someone told me 15 below the median, but... Okay, five, then they're fine. Then they're fine. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I appreciate that heads up as well, because I wasn't certain myself. I was thinking that it was five, but again, I'm new enough that I am not going to sit here and claim to be an authority on anything except how bad at this game I am. So <laughs> I will definitely let the wiser heads in chat correct me when necessary. Um, could could you walk through the Baron fighting and the White Chocobo set up the runner said? Uh, it's it's no White Chocobo at all. Um, effectively, the community has developed and and specific shout out to Twisted Flax for this. Um, effectively, what you do is there is a chart where you turn on encounters, and because encounters are are you cannot run away from. I think technically you can go anywhere, but outside Baron has the easiest encounter, so you start there. So you count the steps for, uh, you know, outside, you know, as soon as you turn everything on and you just count one, two, three, four, five, six, and whatever step number you get an encounter on, that determines the RNG for the rest of your steps. So, you know, at that point in time, you know, you'll get instructions on the chart that says, okay, you need two more fights outside Baron, turn off your encounters, and then it guarantees through that RNG manipulation that your next fight, if it's in a specific spot in the Giant Babel, will be this D-Machine grind. 
Twisted Flax made the chart, but the data was from Simba. Okay, thank you, Dia, for that correction in there. I I do know that Twisted Flax had the chart, and he was very proud of his little chart that he put together. So I want to do proper credit where it's due. And there's, it's interesting because there's all sorts of different community members who give and contribute in different sorts of ways for that kind of information. I will also point out one of the main reasons why this D machine grind is so favored uh, for folks who aren't aware is the attacks that the D machine is using, the fire attack that he uses, is percentage HP based. It takes off 20% of the character's HP for each application. So you don't have to worry about a lower level character getting completely wiped off the face of the planet because it's still percentage no matter what level you are. So that allows for these guys to go in at relatively low levels and be able to get this experience, which the D machine gives you a lot of experience. The runners are using what we call the life glitch to be able to, to resurrect the D machine that they killed with zero vitality, which gives them zero HP, which instantly kills them again, giving the runners double credit for each killed dragon. And this is the best way that the community has found to be able to get experience. So that's why you're seeing both these runners going about using this, and they are very well versed in the intricacies of it. I love using Sylph to kill because that does, in addition to delivering the final blow on the D machines, heals the party up. So it mitigates a lot of that damage that you're getting from the otherwise, you know, the, the fire attacks from the D machine. So I love that particular strategy that PK is using. More importantly, we do have the self glitch turned on, which boils down to as long as Rudy is not in the middle slot, self is, and you have the MPD cast it, self is free. You will not have MP deduction for self cast as long as Rudy is not in the middle slot. Right. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was actually thinking that myself. It's, I mean, honestly, we're seeing both of these runners do really well with this grind, but it feels like with PK using the Sylph to kill the dragon and heal at the same time, I mean, that to me is bordering on Masterstroke. It, it's definitely high level strategies. We see that Inven over here is actually struggling a little bit. Uh, I don't know if he intentionally killed off it. No, okay, he's bringing his Rydia's up. So he's struggling a little bit and taking a little bit longer to go through his grind because he didn't pick up that self. That's um, that's just really key. And, you know, keep in mind, where was that self? I, I don't remember now. I'm sitting there thinking myself, but we did see PK pick it up in the shop. Uh, Punzer asks, can someone explain how Final Fantasy numbering is different between West and Japan? Long story short, you know, Square back in the early days did not want to confuse anyone in the early 90s, which led to lots of confusion later. Um, America never saw the Japanese release of Final Fantasy 2 or 3, which were on the NES. So when Final Fantasy 4 was brought over to the NES, they said, well, it's the second one they got. It's called 2. And then they didn't send us 5 because they're, they thought it was too complicated for us, you know, North American minds. So when they sent us six, they're like, well, it's your third. Now they corrected it all with seven because that's when the internet started existing and we could all look it all up. But that's that's what how it came down to. Uh, Americans didn't get two, three, or five initially. Yeah, it, it definitely confused me when I was a kid when I found out about all that. But yeah, that's a very good explanation of the lovely vagaries of Japanese and American localization. Yeah, and it's important to note that, yeah, none of them are final. Meanwhile, PK uh, got some nice levels out of that, got nuked up to nuke for Rydia, and was done. Like, not super duper high levels, you know, 1800 HP, able to survive some, so looks like we're going to be setting up for reflex strats for Z. He's done with his grind. Just get in there, get out, and get done. Yeah, I think it may be also counting on, I mean, you know that one of the objectives is to go after the, the uh, Masamune altar 
you know that, that another one's the king of monsters, although King Wyvern is probably going to keep his throne today. So maybe counting on getting at least a few more levels through some of the battles that he's going to have to go through to finish everything out. Yeah, looks like he's... Oh, he's going right to the King of Summon Monsters. He goes, I want you, Wyvern. You're <laughs> mine. Yeah, I was about to say, of like, I, I find that interesting, especially since you've you've ob I mean, obviously got the big whale, and you can go ahead and do and do that check about the Masamune altar. It's not super long, but he's deciding, yeah, he, he wants to clash with the king. This is a classic example of wanting to do your objectives. Now, it's interesting because I think Wyvern has a counter script. Specifically, like, if you summon something, he'll cast his Mega Nuke again, I think. And normally, it's like, okay, if you cast a Bahamut, he'll counter with a Mega Nuke. But I think it's, like, to the point where it's any summon... So if you have two Rydia's and one of them gets a wall off, just chain cast a summon. Yeah, any non-Grimoire summon. So this is actually set up really well for this party in that you have Wyvern get wall off on a Rydia and then just go to town with summons and let him kill himself. Yeah, just have him bounce spells off. Or bounce his own spells off, of, off onto himself. Interesting. I don't think I've seen this particularly put into effect, so it'll be it'll be a fun watch, that's for sure. These are those low percentage strats that you really have to know about to get through. And we'll see. Okay, so gets one star veil. This, this is gonna be tight. Well, one of them went off. Is the second oh second one made it off, so Ooh, and yes. Get, have Yang just punch him just once, just because. Well, Intella tries to get a wall off, but doesn't quite. Yeah, so here's the rest of the strategy at this point. Yeah. Call. Get some, get some selves. I probably would have gone with Chocobo, personally, because it's just a shorter animation. I am yeah. But self is free, and you don't know how many of these you're going to have to live through. Oh man, this just watching this strategy in play is really interesting. Like you said, it's sort of this sort of high level stuff. We'll be seeing a lot of this in the table, so Oh, longer cast time on Chocobo. That's why. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, longer longer cast time versus longer animation. It's kind of yeah, it could go either way and Self being free, I could probably see at that point in time. Um, it's interesting because Zerum is kind of has a similar thing. If you cast a summon, I think it's specifically Bahamut for him, he'll counter with a nuke. So if you have a bunch of, of walled up Rydia's at that point in time, let the Bahamuts fly at that point. Yeah, definitely. Well, Inven does pick up that cursed ring. We did not see PK pick it up. Inven is also in the land of the Summit of Monsters. Looks like he's going to do the same thing. We all thought we were going to be Fading King, and we're rewarded with a Leviathan summon. It's a, you know what? We have one of our objectives done, so that's fantastic to see. And we're rewarded with a high level summon for Rydia. That's, I mean, that's the only thing that could have been better is if that was the Adamant. Yeah. Uh, chat pointing out, and I also uh, noticed when PK was getting ready, he does have a curse ring on Tella. Oh, perfect. That's that's awesome. excellent. Also, Dothus is being pulled out in into the ether yet again by chat. Both runners are doing it. Oh, and Inven. Ooh, 
Ooh, didn't get that all set up proper. So yeah, he's gonna get that curse ring rolling. My, my, my. Okay, so yeah, PK had had his battle speed turned down to six, which, which you're facing Wyvern, understandable, definitely. You want that Mega Nuke going off slowly, not quickly. Oh, and here's a play. PK going ahead and saying, yeah, we're going to do Leviathan in the Asura spot. This is spicy a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's... Obviously, the, the queen spot isn't quite as demanding, I suppose, as the king spot. You don't have to worry particularly about the wyvern strats here. But yeah, I, I, I like the play because you've got the power, you've got the nukes and everything. So while you're here, you might as well go ahead and see if you can get perhaps the adamant to your legend sword. Or if you get the twin harp so you can go ahead and make some merry music then you're that much further on the way to your objectives and you were right there already to begin with. Well, I think the problem here is that uh, Asura is actually faster than Leviathan. This is, uh, and help me chat, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the single fastest spot in the entire game. And it has pretty high magic attack as well as we saw 1300 damage to Iridia does get through the fight uh, but it, it wasn't necessarily free. Boo. Uh, nor, yeah, I was going to say, nor was it worth it, apparently, at least in terms of you know active party members. And this is where it gets interesting, because PK had, you know, he avoided Antlion. He avoided doing other Dancian things. Um, he has been kind of, if this is a straight line race, PK has been ahead up to this point in time. But in Ben, because he got those early levels, had been kind of chipping and chipping and chipping away. Now he's right on PK's tail, and PK just wasted a little bit of time doing what was essentially an empty check. That's what you want to try to avoid. It was a good gamble because you're right there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Inven does that or if he goes right to the moon. Meanwhile, PK is doing these checks in Baron N. We know this is worthless. Yeah, it's... And, and again, this is where... Obviously, this is what makes these so interesting is, you know, you were men just mentioning it. We were talking about it earlier. How is, is Envin going to be able to catch up to some of the checks that PK had made or vice versa? And yeah, it does appear that we are about to see kind of our time convergence once again. So yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how how this works out for PK because he's taken down the Mist Dragon. He's obviously taken down uh, Dark Knight Cecil pretty quickly. So unfortunately, that Sand Ruby's not going to do him much good because he's already got a full party. So yeah, uh, but then again, we see Invin doing a Leviathan check as well. So kind of surrendering that time back, which I mean, we know obviously they don't. But we know that this doesn't yield out, and so PK kind of gets back a little of that time that he had, I suppose, surrendered to Invin, because Invin is essentially doing exactly the same thing. And chat pointing out that they like my accent. Thank you. I am from Alabama, so you can blame this out. I always for everything. Blame this for everything, you know. It's that's just a thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, PK. You got to feel for PK because he he is behaving like he's got no time right now. So they've run over. They've done each other's checks. They've what? I mean, at this point. Oh no! PK's doing it. Mark. Oh my gosh! And the fade is faded. Or unfaded, or how would you put that exactly? The fading is now tangible. <laughs> the fading is corporeal. Yeah, the the fading is corporeal. And this this is something that drives me crazy about randomizers, and I I understand it in the heat of the moment. But at the same time, if you fade something, if you make a calculated gamble in a randomizer. 
you have to stick with that gamble. You have to presume I faded something. It's a worthless check. Get it out of mind and have it be your last location. Because in these sort of races, when the competition is this high quality, uh, if you made the strategic decision to fade something like this early on, uh, you you got to hope that it wasn't anything special. Yeah. Uh, and, and meanwhile, on the other side, I see Invenerable has decided to do a Keyless Tower check. So I'll be interested to see how this pays out because this could end up, if it's a Legends, or excuse me, if it's an Adamant or if it's a Twin Harp, this might get Invenerable all that time back. So free top of the tower, just a soldier. And it doesn't matter which soldier. It's not a red cape. We don't care. This is <laughs> going to be free. I mean, at our levels at this point in time, it's going to be free no matter what. But... It does look like PK has a couple more levels than Inven. I don't know if that's necessarily going to play into anything at this point in time, but it's worth at least commenting on. Yeah. Yeah, that might not might not be a factor. It might not be a factor until the Z fight, but we shall see. And I did not catch what came out of that uh, Inven's oh, chat. Earth Crystal. Oh, uh oh. That is value right there. That's that's a whole lot of value right now. Now I I get that we've already done our grind, but hear me out. Tell is worthless now. He's worthless for all except except if you want to keep him as an anchor. What's more important, proper anchoring or having a white mage? Well, considering it's perma join, the answer is oh, you yeah, keep telling done. no matter what. Oh. Right. Duh. Now, if this were group Gosh. stages... You're right. No, you're right. If this were group stages, yeah, exactly. I would be... I'd be throwing Tella to the curb in a heartbeat at this point. But unfortunately, yeah, there's not any value in any character checks. But there is still value in a treasury. Meanwhile, PK says, you know what? He's, I think PK has learned his lesson. It's worth noting, in Ven, through these flag sets, uh, through the group stages, he got to skip all of group stages. He was in because of his champion status to the tables. So uh, there's a lot of us who have been running through these t these flags, and, and the table and group stages are, are relatively similar when you come to objective checks, but always make your flag checks. Like, check it. See if it's free. See if it's required. Oh, and PK is memeing right now. Oh, PK is memeing right now. So, for those of you who do not know, uh, when Inven and PK last raced, and PK almost beat Inven in that Fabul gauntlet back then, he did so on the strength of going to the moon and going top down instead of bottom up, which is the traditional routing style. So PK doing the moon here and doing top down initially is a little bit of a callback to that. Trino, of course, was the theory that says in before PK misread Masa spot as Murasama spot. That's possible. We'll ask him. We'll ask him when we get to the interview. Yeah, it's it's certainly feasible um, that it looks like. But what it also means is our runners are virtually shaking hands now on the moon. Oh, my goodness. This is this is hype. I mean, they're they're right next to each other. Mm hmm.
Not their moon mates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, should we should we interpose the moon music from DuckTales at this point? <laughs> no, because anything by Nobuo Uematsu is superior. I mean, fair, but, you know, if we're going to have fun with moon themes, I just figured I would at least make some contribution. Yeah. All right, but... Yeah, they're they're on their way. Um, we'll see. Yep, stop for a safety save. This is smart check because you don't know what's going to be here. Oh, PK is tenting up from that Murasame check, and Ben it says, "Nap, go for it." Yeah, so it looks like we're going to see the the first uh, Masamune check on Inven's side. Let's uh, let's see what awaits us in this objective spot. Is it free? Is it not? Ooh, Dark Elf. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Well, it's once you get to that second form, it becomes a lot freer. That's for sure. True, because that second form is is weak to things like stop. Like the boss bit is not on him for that particular spell at least but i mean he does cast a lot of magic and i seem to recall this having a pretty decent magic attack spot well i was going to say if those initial ones are anything to attest to it's uh not super uh, scary yeah okay okay so no And Chad also pointing out that PK is studiously avoiding going straight down to the uh, Masamune altar, perhaps trying to get some extra items from maybe the ribbon room and the white spear room, because as they point out, we do still have the adamant out there, we do still have the twin harp, and of course those are both objective spots. Yeah, but come on, do your objectives. That's like number one. I, I honestly think at this point that PK misread and he did the Murasame altar and thought it was the Masamune altar. That there's some confusion because otherwise I, I don't have a good explanation for why he's doing what he's doing. No. Well, I mean, you would figure that once he got through with the Murasame fight and saw that it was not an objective, then, I mean, you've got your answer right there. And unfortunately, he finds no key item value in the ribbon room. A life staff with no white mages. Why are you so cruel, Seed? Why? Hmm. Oh, the pass was available. So that means... Oh, oh, man. Two objectives down. We are now officially looking for either the Twin Harp or the Adamant. Either one will do. Hmm. I'm thinking Envin's probably about to check that ribbon room, too. And so I mean, we'll, have, we'll have the runners doing the same thing, just in slightly different order. I mean, it makes logical sense now that Inven has already done the key check, like because that's a that's a twofer room right there, and then you go and do White Spear and and go from there, like right. But doing it in the different order that PK did, I maybe he was hoping for some equipment. Um, I mean, he got a sorcerer robe for Iridia, so that's nice. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I think we've got a lot that we will. We will enjoy unpacking with the runners once everything is done and dusted here. All right, so Dark Elf with the me change, and he's already has a stop queued up on Ridia. Yeah, so once once that's in place and got the week going, so this will be pretty quick kill on PK's side. And I think he'll be, 
I'd, I'd be interested. I'd be interested to kind of see his reaction when he sees that he gets the pass from the objective spot. I mean, that does make doing your earth checks a little bit less punishing. Right. So the only thing that PK, PK has three more checks up here on the moon. He has white spear, he has crystal sword, and he has Bahamut. I was going to say, I can almost hear it now, the chance of cave value. If it comes oh, to that. The beams are strong. Yes. <laughs> of course, that being said, we don't know that yet, and we may not know that for a little bit, because it looks like uh, they are... I have a feeling that at least Invenerable is intent on going the full bottom-up strategy here. That looks like PK is right there with them as well. This is a straight-line fight at this point. You know, these runners are, are on the same path, They've done the same things. PK might have a couple more levels than Inven. Um, Inven has not done the Murasame altar. So if everything is back on Earth or on a path on the Earth, that benefits PK right now. Although PK doesn't have the Earth crystal. Yeah, that's true. I think that might be the only major difference that... PK has the Luka key and not the Earth Crystal, and Inven has the Earth Crystal. So, yeah, uh, but aside from that, there's not really very much divergence because now we're going to see both runners on the Evil Wall fight at the same time. Well, we were until Inven reset back out. Yeah, Alec Pendrag does ask, is table Swiss or elimination? No, it's, you know, they're, everyone's scheduled six races at this point in time. And then, you know, they take the top 16 out of that. And everyone's already had their six races scheduled. Um, that schedule is available for anyone over on uh, our Discord, if you're willing to. There's, I mean, there's tons of races available. You know, one on one races, and the top sixteen move on. Inven is doing something interesting. Instead of doing the checks over here on the, you know, he still has Murasame White Lance. Crystal Sword and Bahamut. So he's banking that something is going to be down here on Earth where it's a little bit easier at this point in time. And he's going to do Earth Crystal. I think he's going to do Earth Crystal. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, he might be heading over here to the Troya Treasury Room, at which point we have ourselves... No! What are you... <laughs> he's denying us the memes tonight. Invan, no. We want to use that voice clip. We want it. And but you know, this is a race. Mm -hmm. A race. I can absolutely see why he did it. He's comfortable with his party. He's going to nuke everything in its face, and that's going to be it. He doesn't need gear right now. Right. And chat pointing out also that unfortunately PK went through the whole rigmarole of Evil Wall to find. Artemis arrows. So now it looks like he's heading up to do the crystal sword altar. I mean, PK has made his gambles and he's made his choices. So I like the fact that he's sticking with the moon at this point in time. Um, all he's looking for is one. You know, he is looking for either the adamant or the twin harp to mm -hmm. be up here. And that's fine. It's, you know, you're here, you might as well stick with it. Inven, meanwhile, I mean, he's got to jump through a few hoops at this point in time to see. But his hoops are a lot easier to jump through. Uh, you were saying? I mean, you know. <laughs> you, know you, don't you don't expect a free boss spot at the crystal altar. Barbas Brown says this could all hinge on Luke and Cave. You're right, it could. It I, I'm, not could yeah. on, I'm not banking on it, but it could. Meanwhile, we do find, get some interesting information on Inven's side. At the Golbez spot is going to be either Rubicante or the Elements. We haven't 
dipped our pinky toe into the dwarf castle checks yet. Hey, another cane, another ready, yeah. No, well, gee, where have we seen them before? Uh, and of joined. My English teachers would be scandalized. Oh, so PK ended up finding the hook at the crystal sword. Now that's spicy. And he said, no, I'm fading Bahamut. One of the two items I need is going to be back on Earth. Mm, I probably would have checked Bahamut, just given everything, but you have to fly either way. So that was Elements, or that was that the Vanilla Mylan fight? On uh, Invin's side? Yeah, it was, it was Mylan. But I'm, it seems like I mean, maybe PK is banking on that rat tail turn in to be one of the items. I think he knows at this point that he did something that he suspects Inven didn't do. And that's, I mean, lean into that. Anytime you're doing something that you expect your opponent to do, Invenerable, meanwhile, tower key. Oh, boy. Well, I was going to say he's already done most of the legwork in Tower, so. Yeah, and even though it's a free boss, it's a cutscene, though. Like, ugh. Yeah, it's, like you said, though, it's the gambles. Which gamble's going to pay out? We don't know yet. This, this feels like a bad gamble, though. This feels like if this pays off, it will be fantastic. But if it's not, it's hard to recover from a rabbit hole like this. You faded the rest of the moon to go down to the blue planet to do Earth Crystal. <laughs> and that Earth Crystal is now leading you to Tower Key. If that Tower Key leads you on a wild goose chase, it could be nothing. Rat Tail, meanwhile, is Pina. And that opens up two checks. Because we've got the Sylph item and we have Sheila too. All the side quests. Mm-hmm. I mean, we knew from the objectives that this was probably going to be a seed about lapping around all parts of the world. And boy, did we get that. Here's the best part about all of this. They could both be right. One of them could get adamant. The other one could get twin heart. And, and then... We have a race. I was going to say, and then we have some real spicy gaming going on. Yeah, and Woo Bear, may, like, you always got to finish the rabbit holes. Because once you start them, you know, it's, it's like I mentioned earlier with the gambles. Stick to your gambles. You have to follow them through. But man, it feels bad. Like, you do not feel good doing it. You're, you feel forced into it. You're like, ah, oh, gosh. I'm not playing the seed. The seed is playing me. First check by Pete K. Ninja Sword. Worthless. Yep. We, there's no edge to be found here today, unfortunately. But he's got a second check. So, I mean, it, this could be it. I mean, we could be seeing like, side by side key item checks here. And if it ends up being side-by-side -side results for those objectives, oh dear. All right, meanwhile, Invenerable. Tower key turn in, and it's the package! No! Oh! Oh, that hurts. And the pigtail for PK! <gasps> oh! <laughs> our <dead> <laughs> Oh, dear. Oh. And, and, and the beat goes on, everybody. Uh, so now we see some uh, some separation. We got two bosses over here on Invent's side. He's going to go ahead and do Dwarf Castle. Meanwhile, PK says, okay, let's bite the bullet. Let's do this Luca Cave check. They are both feeling horrible right now. Oh, this drama is so great. This 
is what the table flags are about. I mean, the the two of these runners, these two are among the very best in the community. You know, they're already in the table flags. They're in the top 32. You could make an argument that there were some people who were left out of the table flags who are, who are probably more experienced runners. But, hey, it's the top 32. You got to gotta win the games to get in. But even beyond just being in the 32, these two runners are very well known in the entire free enterprise community as being just top notch competitors. This is super, super awesome to be set up like this, where they're both going in different directions and they're both probably a little bit tilted. Yeah, it's, I imagine, yeah, like you said, they're both probably just on the edge of their respective seats wanting to see how this all pans out. Twin heart! We have our music! So PK is in go mode. He's happy with that particular check. That's fine. Indvin could still be in it. Because mm -hmm. he's got to... PK's got to defeat this boss. And then he's got to turn around and do the whole entire Twin Harp sequence. If Inven gets the adamant here, he's in a better position. Yep. And they both have the path. So once they get everything taken care of item-wise, it's straight to Z. Is Warp Glitch off? Yes. Warp Glitch is off for the Table Flags. Which explains why they faded Dwarf probably more so than you would see people in the group stages. And Invenerable gets, this is the race, Crystal oh. Ring. And he resets back to Moon. Yeah, that's when he says, okay, we got to do these other Moon checks. At yep. this point in time. And the problem is, at this point, PK has done all the moon checks that he's going to do, except for Bahamut Cave. And if Adamant's at Bahamut Cave, great. But I bet you it's going to be something like Baron Key, because that's the only other rabbit hole we haven't seen. Yeah. In fact, I think it has to be Baron Key at this point in time. Unless Twin Harp is Baron Key, at which point, then that would just be hilarious. <laughs> and... Unfortunately for Invenerable, it wouldn't really matter because then PK's got three objectives and he's off to Z. Yeah, so right now, now, you know, the race isn't over. You gotta, you know, it's not over until the Z-Man shakes. So, and remember, PK and Inven both kind of cut their grinds a little bit short. Now they're both very top-notch racers, but anything can happen in Zeromus. Mm-hmm. Yep. We've seen we've seen races decided by the barest minimums in the Z fight, and as good as both of these guys are, it's very possible that we could see that again. All right, so PK knows he's in go mode. He is on his way. He does not have the Earth Crystal for wherever that was at this point in time. He is on his way, and we are going to get a peek at one of the favorite memes within the free enterprise community. Um, you know, the community does a couple different things that we we like randomizing. We we love being able to shake things up and, and go all over the place and, and mix things up. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to mix up was, you know, the the music that changed the fey folk and, and broke their concentration. So there are quite a few different musics available uh, that have been midied out and, and of course so the question always becomes is what the music is going to be and it's always wonderful it's always a, a great rendition of, of everything that's going on shout out to the community curators uh, for really tackling this and the other meme that we'll talk about before too long yeah the the list of potential music hits that DJ Spoonie B plays is extensive and varied across a lot of different gaming communities and as uh, Vitasia was mentioning courtesy of the great folks here at the community and we're about to find out what that music is as PK engages the Dark Elf and we will all enjoy those tunes together shortly.
Meanwhile, Inven is working his way <laughs> through these moon bosses. Yeah, this one's free. The man feels bad, man. We've heard the loop now. That was uh, Tadpole Pond from Super Mario RPG. That's that's a fantastic rendition of that particular song. My goodness. Shout out to all the talented folks in the community who are putting all of that together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, it's, it's one of those you definitely want to make sure you hear it anyway. And it's, it, it's almost a benefit kind of from a, a little bit of a longer story boss fight like Dr. Lugay is just to hear a little bit more of it, if you aren't racing, at least. Yeah, and chat pointing out, this is kind of an odd spot for this particular party setup, in large part because uh, it's a really, really high magic spot. Oh my god. Oh dear. Oh dear. Double required. We weren't getting away from doing that King and Queen of Evelyn spot at all. All the value at Luca Cave. My goodness. Yeah, it's... Well, I mean, it, obviously PK was in go mode. Now he's in, he's in four-way go mode, essentially, because he could complete conceivably every objective on the books. Oh no, and Inven, so Inven got the hook from the Crystal Sword Altar, followed the rat tail, followed the pan, followed it through everything that PK had seen done earlier. And of course, it was nothing. So he reset out, and now he's going to be doing the Murasame Altar instead of doing... He doesn't have the Luka Key. Where was the Luka Key? Yeah, it's. I was gonna say, I think the Luka key came from the oh, Samurai altar. altar. Okay, so yeah, this is required. Oh, so, uh, folks, that means PK, who is on track to win at this point, will win simply because he chose to do top down moon, which was the exact play 
that put him so close to Inven in that Fabul gauntlet race that everyone was raving about before. Uh, so is Top of Moon a thing now? I mean, it sure seems like it. It certainly works for PK, that's for sure. And of course, we have all the Z flags. The other thing that we've randomized here, we cannot add Zero Mess, of course, to the enemy pool because he's just too overpowered and you want to have the last boss be at least a little bit consistent. But well, what do we do uh, when he unveils his final, his true colors, as the vanilla game says? Uh, of course, that sprite is also randomized within the seed. So it could be one of more than 450 different Z sprites that are in the pool. Just a huge shout out to the community curators who do all the work in tracking all of that. Uh, more than 450 sprites is a lot of sprites. I've not seen them all at all, even remotely. But the question becomes, whose butt are we going to kick tonight? Well, PK puts that crystal out there with in the hands of Anchortella, and let's see. Oh my god! <laughs> it's oh. Rossetti! Oh, that's so bad. Holy crap! Oh, that is perfect. Meanwhile, we got some nukes rolling now. We got one reflect set up, so yeah. What? I was going to say, is Rossetti so big that he even covers up the damage numbers? No. That it just whiffed. Huh. Interesting. It might have been put in before the transformation. I know that seems to have something to do with it. It can, from time to time. Get some extra damage on your melee fighters here. What's probably going to happen is, after a little bit, PK is going to back off on the physical damage and rely on reflected nukes at that point in time. The reason for that is that Zero Mus was originally intended to have a, an HP pool of over 100,000 HP. However, because this is the early Super Nintendo era, coding was, shall we say, bad. And we couldn't program a boss with over 100,000 health. So what did they do? They created a boss with about 60,000 health or so and gave him a counter refresh of his HP after a certain point in time. Now, here's the interesting thing about Final Fantasy IV, is you can bypass any counter anything if you use reflected magic. It will have no counters ever will be done. So simply, if you want to literally more than half Zero Miss's final HP, make sure that he gets damaged to the point where he... he gets close to the HP refill, and then just refly on Reflected Magic at that point in time, and he will not refill his HP. That's another one of those strategies that it took me a little bit to get used to in regards to the to trying to master the techniques of this community, is reflecting those nukes and whites if you have a Rosa or anything like that. It's it takes a little bit of timing, but it's an awfully good strategy once you get the hang of it. Absolutely. Meanwhile, we have... I mean, the nukes are pouring on. Meanwhile, Inven is doing his Kenyatso fight. He's at the right spot now. He's got his Twin Harp, so he knows the path that he needs to take. Yeah, I think once he once he gets this through, he's. I, I I don't think it'll be too long before he's at this Z fight as well. So, even though you know we can talk about routing decisions or what the what gambles they pursued, in the end, this is still going to be a difference of, I would say maybe, because let's see, Invin still obviously has to do the twin harp stuff. I would say this is maybe going to be a difference of 10, 15 minutes at the most. So even with everything being scattered around, it's still going to be fairly close. 
And there it is. Flashes. And PK with the win tonight. Getting his ultimate revenge back for that Fabul Gauntlet elimination. Oh, GG to PK. That was excellently done across the board. And it is definitely a well-deserved victory. So GG, PK, congratulations. Yeah, and I believe he. we are joined now by PK in with an official time 1 and 26, 35. GG's, PK. How you feeling, man? Uh, I feel great. Um, obviously a big GG to Inven. And GG to Antlion for double crossing me. <laughs> I was I was wondering because you baited Antline early and it, you know that was kind of a risky gamble but I liked it but then you went back there were you worried that you might have missed something I mean I missed something the last time I played Inven I, I mean with the way the seed played out there was nothing that I could have gotten early at Antline that would have changed you know the way I was going to de-machine go down and do Fey March uh, and clear that but it was one of those well it's burnt me once uh, in my in my the last time I played Inven, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I saw the gauntlet. I was like, am I gonna reset out of this? I decided not to. Um, so uh, Antlion is is two and zero against me at this point. I mean, I don't know. I think I would happily take a losing record against the Antlion Cave for a win over the defending champion Invenerable. Yeah. I mean, uh, I can't say enough about Inven. He is the greatest person. Um, he's been huge in you know me even having a chance of beating him. And we were discussing this before. This was the exact type of seed that I was hoping for. Was uh, you know it's not quick, it's not one hundred percent linear. Uh, you know it's it's going to come down to who maybe makes one or two of the right checks at the right time. Um, and even from what I saw, you know, Inven could have just as, you know, if the Adamant hadn't been behind that harp, it could have been an entirely different seed. We were clenched up here in the booth, and I'm sure all of chat was as well, because you, you both went on kind of, you know, divergent, but still at the same time rabbit holes that both ended up being completely empty. And then, you know as kind of the the consolation check you went to luca cave he ended up doing um uh the dwarf castle actually um i know you had the luca check from that murasame altar um was that a meme check from last time as well or is that just your normal strategy go from the top down there in the moon um I mean, that was just sort of one of those, like, I have a pretty powerful team. I'm going to YOLO this. If it's go mode, then it's go mode. But otherwise, you know, I was going to clear all of those spots before I left unless I had found go mode. Um, it happened to be super free. But basically, once I had Rat Tail, um, which I think was the pan turn in, I was, I was kind of committed to at least not going back to Cape Bahamut. So if Luca hadn't played out, I was going to go Dwarf, and then I was going to go top. You know, I was just going to do everything besides going back to Cape Bahamut, and Luca just happened to be uh, the, the correct play. And it's one of those, you know, you don't have to fight a boss to check the key item. So it's, it's, it's tricksy quick for a save scum compared to, you know, beating both Dwarf bosses, going through those cutscenes, all of that. So I just figured, you know, why not? It's part of a chain that I found on the moon. So if it is something good, then it might be an advantage. And it paid up. Oh, and we see Gomez was up in that barren spot, so dodged something there. Yeah, when I uh, I checked, I didn't need to check, you know, the the twin harp key item, but I did just to try to get a little information, to either calm myself down. Uh, you know, or, or be like, well, if this is Baron, then maybe, you know, this Twin Harp check was gating all of go mode and then it was adamant. So I felt sort of OK in the race, you know, in that regards, just because Inven, you know, would have had to have done very similar routing for us to be at the same place at the same time because there was no other go mode available, which was 
Very nice. But uh, thank you, Karant, Viteja, um, Neobari, the restreamer, Bad Karma, doing the tracking. Um, I am going to uh, have a private celebration. <laughs> and uh, once again, GG's to Inven. Uh, I, I'm sure this, you know, I'm sure you'll get this one back for me the next time we play. Oh, well, GG, PK, appreciate it. Uh, you gave us quite a great race, so thank you for racing with us tonight, for giving us such a great show here on RPG Limit Break. And uh, yeah, enjoy your celebration. Have a great night. Thank you all. You take care. GG is once again to the race winner, PK4787. If you liked what you saw from him, go ahead, give him a follow here on Twitch. Easiest way to support the runners. Uh, or us is to give uh, the runners a follow, give us a follow also. Keep in mind, uh, for this tournament, we've been on here at RPG Limit Break, one of our wonderful partner stations. We're also on our home station over at twitch.tv slash free enterprise. Also want to give a shout out to Randomania, who's allowing us to use their channels as well when we have some overflow. Um, make sure to follow all of those channels if you want to keep up to date with this table action. Well, meanwhile, we have Invenerable having finished off the Twin Harp objective, and now he is making his way over to the Z fight as well. So he should be confronting the world's angriest mole very shortly. It's that's it's so rude. Now the nice thing is that because Inven does have the pass, he can just kind of zip right on over. PK was also did it, so uh, no long moonwalk at this point in time. Yeah, no no walks of shame here. Just going to stride right up to Z and smack him upside the head. It's I don't see Inven having much difficulty with this fight either. I mean, because both players, of course, like you mentioned, they have identical parties, and so I think the strats are pretty much going to be the same. So I would be very surprised if this fight is not over within a few minutes from Inven. Yeah, this is going to be very, very quick. And I, I see there's some conversation and debate going on in chat. You know, I, I you know, I will say this, uh, you know, Inven as, as the reigning champion has had a lot of practice on these table flags. And I think anyone should feel proud to defeat Inven in a one-on-one -on -one race. That's not taking anything away from PK because PK is still a fantastic runner in his own right. And everyone, everyone, in the table stages at this point is a fantastic runner and you have to take everyone seriously at this point in time uh in the table stages no race is free that said uh inven has i think through the community established himself as one of the top easily you know bare minimum one of the top five runners in the community just over the history of the free enterprise uh, races that have been done uh so any win that you can get over inven is absolutely a feather in your cap yeah, and to kind of put this into a little bit of a bigger perspective, when we got started with these seeds, there were 117 runners in the competition. We're down to the final 32. This is the top quarter, roughly, of free enterprise runners. So the potential really is there for anybody to beat anybody. So this, this is a testament to the ability of both runners. PK and Invent are excellent. The fact that PK1 doesn't take anything from Invenerable, the fact that Invenerable's coming in second doesn't take anything away from him or PK. They're both excellent, and if you race this race 10 times, I kind of get the feeling that you're probably going to go 5-5 five and five or 6-4 and four because they're that good and they're that close to each other. No, absolutely. So Inven is getting his nuke on right at the moment getting again some other damage from his cane and yang while it's still in that safe zone you want to try to you know both of these runners were, were very very good about counting the hp they kind of know where the hp refill hits um, and don't ask me i'm not this high level at this point <laughs> to be honest oh but that is an unfortunate counter nuke hitting his unreflected ridia so gotta be able to pull his ridia up very quickly here 
Yeah, that's one thing. That's one area where I think PK got a little bit luckier in the Z fight because he got that counter nuke as well. But the counter nuke went straight on to Tella, who is not particularly necessary in this fight aside from wielding the crystal and being that lovely agility anchor. So yeah, it's an unfortunate break for Invin here. I mean, he'll be set up fine. You know, the Big Bang came out. He'll get a cure four off, a single target cure four off on that Rydia. And, and then he'll be set up fairly well for the rest of this race. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a, it's a small speed bump that he had to get over that PK didn't have to surmount. Just, that's how chance works at times. Are, are you telling me that in a randomizer video game, random chance has something to do with the outcome? No, shocking. Who would ever think that? What? I am shocked, sir. Scandalized, even. Well, the good news is Envin was able to get that Rydia back up and probably and should be good to go after making sure that both of his major damage dealers are back up and ready to dispense with their fiery justice. And so, yeah, it looks like he's in pretty good position to finish this off in relatively short order. Wow, even using Kane as a, as a chemist here. I mean, that's what you got to do at this point in time. Um, you are at the point where you don't want Kane or Yang to be dishing out any damage right now because you're close to that HP refill point. So you want to just rely on the nukes at this point, the reflected nukes, so that you don't get the HP refill and the, the boss goes down much, much faster. Right, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's that's another one of those things that, again, me being a newer runner, I kind of had to learn that the hard way. But these guys have this knowledge very well and probably carved into their brains somewhere so that they could virtually do this, I would say, almost in their sleep. That was a clutch 5 HP refill of Rydia with the Cure 2 toss there. Um, his second Rydia was about to fall over from the HP drain. Uh, of the the Big Bang. Just, I mean, really well done there by Inven, catching himself right at the very end. Yeah, that's excellent, because one of the screens that you definitely don't want to see is HP ran out, but the HP that ran out is Rossetti's, so GG, Inven. GG's to Inven, let's see. We are joined now by Invenerable. Man, what a seed, huh? Yeah, that was uh, spectacularly different from a lot of the table flags I've been running these last few weeks. Uh, Earth? Haunted? Really? Neither of those potential objective items on Earth? Ugh, it, it hurts. It hurts so bad. Well, and it was fantastic because at the same time that you were doing the Earth Crystal and we're kind of going down that route, PK was doing the Pan route. And, you know, because he had found that up on the moon and because um, he found the hook went to the rat tail. So you were both kind of going down rabbit holes at the same time and both came to the end of it at about the same time initially. Now he had already done Murasame altar. Mm -hmm. So he, that's what his decision was after you ended up fading, you know, okay. Your, your initial checks and gambles were empty. He ended up going to Luca cave while you, at the same time that you did dwarf castle. Gotcha. And you know, I didn't, I did not pay any attention to the credits, but where was the Adamant Rock? Was it? It was, it was the Harp? Twin Harp. Yeah, it was yeah, that Twin, Twin Harp. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, then where was Baron Key? Was Baron Key at Cave Bahamut then? Yes, had to behind okay. a gold is. Yeah, yep. that was my only hope at the end there. I had to hope, please let Baron Key have been there and PK chased it, but the, the Dun came in and I'm like, oh, well. You know, but yeah, everything went from bad to worse that seed. Like it started with before my grind, I'm like where ethers, where ethers. Last shop I check, ethers. Then the second part of it was uh, after I'd completed Bay March, I'm like, you know, on a lot of these seeds, the vast majority of the key items are just on Earth, gated by other things on Earth. Let me let me go do the keyless tower check and see what happens. Got the Earth crystal. I'm like, well, I don't want to do that, but I guess I'll hang on to it. When the moon got the pass, and I'm like okay, maybe I'll go back to Earth. And back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And yeah, Murasame Altar. The last time PK and I raced 1v1 in a tournament, 
Murasame Altar had it all, and it looks like that's how it played out again tonight. It is, and in that, the last time that you guys played, you ended up coming out, out on top, but it was one of the closest races in that Fibul Gauntlet, wasn't it? Oh yeah, so close. So definitely not a close one tonight, but that's what uh, going into Lower Babel twice and the full Tower of Zot will do to you. Ugh, it hurts, but... I'm going to keep playing the way I'm playing. I think Moon is still haunted a lot of the time. I'm willing to commit to a lot of extra Earth checks. What does that do to the routing? And this is, you know, kind of a high level conversation, but what does it do to the routing when you get that early Magma Key or like an early Darkness Crystal? How does that play with how you can plan out the rest of the seed? Uh, Magma Key doesn't do much. Darkness Crystal, though, basically screams, find a grind, any grind. Either put together a team to do Mac Giants, find a Tella and do D-Money. You want to do your grind as quickly as possible. You do not want to hesitate on it, uh, except in, like, very niche circumstances. Uh, this was not one of them. I was happy to get my grind out of the way, let my Rydia's nuke through everything. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the objectives, you know. Maybe I should have just gone a full moon right at the start, but again, so many seeds have a fully haunted moon, and I was hoping initially find my last objective on Earth, and then on the moon you just walk from the Ogopogo altar to uh, Zoromus with the swag walk. But uh, I got in my own head, found the pass, and I'm like, well, no swag walk tonight. Uh, but yeah, fun seed, real nasty, and uh, definitely betraying a lot of the conventional wisdom that we have right now on these table flags. I liked it. No, it absolutely did. So, you know, talk me through, because the early game was really interesting. I mean, the party setup to begin with was just ridiculous. I mean, you had Rydia's for days. You had multiple Tellas. You had Canes. White mages were nowhere to be found. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you don't need a white mage if you have a good slingshot enabled. Uh, and I even... I had considered if I hadn't felt behind, which I did feel behind very early, uh, when I saw that Asura summon on the moon when I was buying Ether 2s, I'm like, hey, I could buy this, give my Rydia's a little extra healing power if I need it. But I didn't want to even take the seconds to go back for that. I was trying to constantly be going between key item checks, and the only thing I bought after my grind was one cursed ring, because uh, I'd seen it earlier, but I didn't have the cash at the time for it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You you don't need a white mage as long as you have, you know, power overwhelming instead. I mean, and when you can set that up, that's perfectly fine, right? Yeah, oh yeah. I do got to say, there's there's some people in chat that are a little bit upset with you for not memeing even further by going to the Earth Crystal Troya Treasury check. <laughs> Uh, that's, you know, that's reasonable, but at the same time, my team had the power it needed. Kane had a decent enough weapon. Yang doesn't need weapons. The Rydia's new nuke. I mean, maybe I could have found, like, some Stardust Rods or Tiaras that would have helped them out even more. But, eh, aside from the enemies not knowing I had other punchable characters other than Rydia's, I, my team was fine. We tore through pretty much every fight. And uh, even the one thing at Zeromus was the counter nuke again. It hits the, I have, I have star build one of my Rydia's even. So, and it hits, it, I, I tried to cut my odds there of getting a Rydia knocked out by a nuke from, you know, 40% to 20% and it still came up. Terrible, terrible board face AI coming at me. But uh, well, yeah. then you had the Rydia who had only what, five HP after a big bang and you were scrambling to get a cure off on her before her HP ran out. Oh, well, that wasn't the real concern there. The bigger concern was, do did I keep enough MP on my Tella to cast a wall again? Because I only had one Star Bell at that point. And yeah, so we got the wall back up on Tella. I mean, from Tella and then reflected. But it turns out it did enough damage anyway. I didn't need to reflect it. A direct nuke would have done that as well. But I had, I'd lost count and I didn't want to accidentally activate a refill, especially because my Rydia's they weren't exactly loaded for bear, you know, their nukes only doing like six to seven thousand. Like if you're rolling quad nines because you've bluffed up with Palom a couple times, you can kind of gamble on that direct nuke. Right there, I'm like, they're a little weak. Let's let's make sure we set the wall up. Oh, right. I will I will add my GG's in there as well in Venerable. Uh it was a great match to watch from uh, both of you guys, and oh uh, it's it's especially great for somebody like me who's a new runner and who's seeing all of these table strats unfold with the different grinds and the different checks just 
kind of getting a sense into into what you guys are thinking as far as going after these key items and the different trying running back and forth like you were saying kind of back and forth and back and forth so uh, thank you for putting on such a great show and i definitely appreciate it as a relatively new runner to the free enterprise community myself hey you're welcome you know that's the thing you know win or lose as long as we're having fun and hopefully providing some good quality entertainment uh what more can you ask for okay i guess you can ask for a win as well but pk <laughs> is a heck of a racer he has been putting in the hours putting in the races uh if anyone deserves it it is him and hopefully i'll get to uh exact a little revenge if i we both make it to the round of 16. fingers crossed well, well ggs to you invent and of course congratulations to pk as well yeah lots of free enterprise still to come i mean you it's the first race you have tons more races to go Good luck to you both as you continue with the race. Hey, thank y'all so much. And thanks to the entire Restream team. Y'all are the best. Couldn't do it without y'all. And uh, yeah, much appreciated. Have a good night, y'all. Likewise. Yeah, we do want to give one last shout out to, of course, you know, our you know, behind the scenes folks, Neobari and Bad Karma. Thank you so much. And Karant, first FE stream. Hope you had a great time. In the meantime, we are setting up to raid Free Enterprise where we have another race just about to kick off it's gonna be frostbite 3030 versus dia uh and it's just about to start so you're gonna get like a five minute bathroom break to get in while we go raiding <laughs>